Hello, welcome back to Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies, and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video we're going to be talking about Miriam, Sentinel Worm. It is 3 green blue red for a 6-6 legendary creature Dragon Spirit. It has Flying and Ward 2, as well as whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. So Miriam effectively doubles up every dragon that we cast or cheat into play, and can make us a pretty scary board state in no time. Before we go into the individual sections, let's quickly go over what this deck is trying to do, and then also how it wins. Firstly, we're going to be wanting to play lots of dragons. Fortunately over the last few years, we've received some cheaper ones as well to add some great utility to the deck, which will run on top of some hefty finishers, as swinging through with a board of flying dragons has always been a pretty solid way to win a game of magic. To help get more of our big Dargon threats into play, we'll also run some cards that can cheat them out of our deck or our hand, as Miriam doesn't care how they get there, just as long as they're non-tokens entering the battlefield. One thing to remember as we go through the video, is that with our commander in play, every creature that we mention is a dragon, we will get two of with Miriam. So take a card like Dragonborn Champion, which draws us a card whenever we deal 5 or more damage to a player. It is a dragon, so if we play it with our commander out, we'll get 2 of them, so we'll draw 2 cards every time we deal 5 or more damage. This ability to double up our dragons and our effects can take some already powerful dragon cards and make them obscene. First up is our Dragons Matters section. These are cards that can help tie all the powerful dragons together, either by making them easy to cast, giving us some card advantage, or helping us win the game. First up are cards that make our dragons cheaper to cast. These give us plays early in the game, so that we can get to casting our big threats that little bit quicker. There's a nice couple of effects that do this, with cards like Acolyte of Baramut, Dragonlord Servant and Dragon Speaker Shaman being nice budget options as well. Sticking on the getting dragons out ahead of curve, we have some ramp options that synergize nicely with the dragons that we'll be playing. Dragon's Horde is a mana rock that can help fix our colours, while also letting us draw cards later in the game to help refill our hand. Then Ganax, Astral Hunter, will really like all the token copies that our commander makes, as it, and its copy, will make us plenty of treasure to use for them. Then there is also Orb of Dragonkind, which can be used to ramp us ahead, and has the added utility of letting us dig through our deck for a dragon card in case we ever run out of them in our hand. We get a bit more card advantage in the form of Kalesa Scale Singer, which lets us cast dragon spells from the top of our library. For some damage, we have cards like Dragon's Tempest and Scourge of Valkas, which can ping any target equal to the number of dragons that we control whenever a dragon enters the battlefield. In this deck, where with our commander out, each dragon we play is basically doubled, that doubles the amount of damage that we can throw around with these cards. These can either be removal, or are a pretty solid win condition as well. To help make us even more dragons, we have Lathless, Dragon Queen, and Altava Hellkite. The tokens they make won't get doubled with our commander, but importantly, they themselves will be copied with Miriam. One of these by itself can win a game of commander, but having multiple of them will be the difference from taking out an opponent to taking out the whole board. We then have some nice buff effects, which can pump up how much damage our flying beasties can dish out, with cards like Crucible of Fire and Thrakus the Butcher. Because we're kind of going wide with our dragons, this will add up to a ton of damage very quickly. Moving over to our ramp, this is definitely something that we can't really scrimp on, as dragons tend to cost a fair bit of mana to cast. We're going to be starting off with a wide selection of rampant growth effects, that go through our deck and get lands out. Personally, I would also want to add something like Sky Shroud Claim, which lets us get two lands out of the deck as well. Having all of these will mean we'll be able to fix our colours and play our spells ahead of curve. And then for some additional ramp, you can look at the always solid Soul Ring and Arcane Signet. We can also run some ramp on some of our dragons, which again obviously get better when our commander gives us a copy of them. Cards like Savage Ventmore, Cluth Unrivaled Ancient, and Ancient Copper Dragon all can ramp us ahead into another big dragon spell. Savage Ventmore especially is one of my favourite dragons in these kind of decks, and what's best is that it's by far the cheapest of the ones mentioned here. When it comes to our card draw, we're generally going to be looking at spells that care about the size of our creatures, because our dragon spells are going to be pretty big. What you're looking for is firstly cards like Return of the Wildspeaker or Rishkar's Expertise. These draw us cards equal to the greatest power among creatures that we control. What's nice is that they both have some extra added utility as well, with Return of the Wildspeaker also being able to pump our team if we want to swing through for a win, and then Rishkar's Expertise has the added bonus of letting us put a 5 drop from our hand into play. We then have cards like Garrick's Uprising and Team of Ascendancy, which draw us cards when a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield. What's nice about these is that they also don't care about the creatures being tokens or not, so we'll draw 2 cards if we play a large dragon with our commander out. The added trample from Garak's Uprising, and most definitely the haste from Teemo Ascendancy will be really strong additional effects to give to our dragon team. We already mentioned Dragonborn Champion earlier, but it's a great bit of card draw that rewards us for swinging at our opponents. 
Then we have Ancient Silver Dragon, which draws us cards equal to the roll of a d20 when it connects. This card is extremely good, but like most of the mythic cycle it comes from, it's currently a bit on the pricey side. Hopefully as more of the set is opened, the cards will come down a bit. And then, one last bit of card advantage, is Furkrag Cunning Instigator. This lets us go to creature when we attack an opponent with a dragon. Then when the goaded creature attacks, Furkag gets bigger and we get to draw a card, which is pretty nice. Moving over to our interaction, Teema has plenty of good options out there for us. First up, you have some great bits of targeted removal, with things like Pongify, Reality Shift, Beast Within, and Chaos Warp. What's great about these is that they're either really cheap and efficient to cast, or they answer a wide range of threats. You can also run a bit of counter magic to help stop against any board wipes, and help keep the dragon train rolling. An offer you can't refuse is extremely cheap to cast, and stops exactly what we need it to stop. And then a card like Sapphire Dragon is shockingly also a dragon, that we can cast after we've sent it on an adventure if we need another dragon threat. For some board wipes, we can look at cards like Magma Quake, as it'll wipe out most things that aren't on our board. And then you have Blasphemous Act, because it's just very efficient and very cheap to purchase. Moving over to some win cons, outside of the dragons we've already mentioned, we have some very solid ways of winning the game. First up is cards that let us cheat things into play. These cards can let us put multiple of our big dragons into play in a turn cycle, and with our commander, we'll get two of each of them. This is one of the quickest ways this deck can win, as it'll give us a huge board state that we can swing through with. I personally am a really big fan of Wild Pair. It's a really budget option, and gives you tons of utility. As most dragons are 5-5s five or 6-6, six six, it shouldn't be too hard to find something good out of your deck. To help those dragons attack as quickly as possible, we can run some effects that give our whole team haste, so they can get through for as much damage the turn they come into play. And then, because Miriam makes tokens of the dragons we put into play, we can run some cards like Adrix and Nev Twincasters, which double up all the tokens that we make, for even more dragon fun. You then also have a card like Bruderclad, which each turn creates a token, and then can turn all of our tokens on the board into the most broken dragon that we control. For one last big dragon, we have Hellkite Charger. It has an ability that lets us have an additional combat phase for 7 mana. This gets really broken when combined with some of the dragons that make mana either when they attack or when they connect. With those cards, we have the potential for some infinite attack steps. And then one last little budget option that I really like is Bower Passage. This basically makes our dragons unblockable, and means that unless you're playing against Reach Tribal, everything will always be able to swing through. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, as with three colours we can't run too many that don't tap for coloured mana. Of those, I like Command Beacon, as while this deck doesn't need the commander to win, it just really helps rush us ahead and lets us do some really broken things. I also think Bonders Enclave could be a really solid card in this deck, as it can be used for a mana sink in the late game to draw some extra cards. For some coloured mana producers, you can't go wrong in a deck with big creatures dealing a ton of damage if you include the green and red hideaway lands, as they can be great at cheating something huge into play. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.